I uh, did order some wheels a couple of months ago. A little bit of a hitch at the moment. So I'm down to a deadline. I gotta work something out. I don't think, as nice as this is, I don't think it's gonna cut it on this style bike. And plus, because I've changed the front end, trying to find something that matches on the front, it might not work. So, being a sport bike the way it is, um, even though it's a retro thing, um, I wanted to run 17s, some nice tyres, so I got these Diablo Rossi's, which I have on my Ducati. I love these things, so I got a nice set of these. Yeah, the cool thing is, they got some red writing on there, which, look, hang on, we're, oh, there it is. It matches my bike. I think they made these for my bike. They, when they were making these, they thought, hey, that, that Australian asshole is going to want to put them on a bike with a red frame. I probably not. I can drink. So anyway, waiting on the wheels, got a deadline, so what the hell am I going to do? Has to have spoke wheels, in my opinion. That's how I envisioned the bike from the start. I want that retro look. I think I'm getting there with it. So I got the news the other day, my wheels weren't turning up, so I turned to my good friend, Joe Alano, the guzzy doctor. And of course, we worked it out. Um, it's amazing how many different parts we're going to end up in the bike. Set of Marzocchi's here. So I found, went through a bunch of rotors, got some nice floating rotors. And of course, with this later model front end, it's got radial four piston Brembo's on it. Everything's a little tight in there, as we know. So we got this. Just use this hub through the 80s. It's a typical Guzzy hub. So. I put this in here, assembled up, it's nice, it has these flanges, and it takes late model rotors, bolt straight on. I can even put the ABS reluctor ring on there, so that's gonna work. Problem is, I put everything in there, and the hub and the spacing of the rotors is a little bit too wide. It's actually five millimeters too wide. So, cool thing about this, take this flange, I can put it in the lathe, face off two and a half millimeters off each side. So, like they say, necessity is the mother of an invention. I'm not saying that I'm inventing the fucking wheel, I'm not that old, but I'm not re not, well, not even re I'm just making the fucking thing fit. So, I got this faced up. See? I'll go on here. Fit in nice. Let's try one to start with. I think they'll stop pretty good. What would be nice though if we had a spoke and rims make it uh, ride better than this. So anyway, I got to organize some, uh, I got the rims organized, I just got to get the spoke, I got the back spokes organized, I'm good with that. So like I said, I'm kind of up against the wall here. So I better go and get on the blower and take care of that. But we've still got to worry about the back one, of course being shaft drive makes it a little more difficult than a chain drive bike or something you can always shim, space, whatever, flip it the other side. I've got a solution for this. I'll talk about that later. Got to get the front first. Okay, the wheel dilemma. This is just some of the stuff I've gotten together and amassed to somehow put some 17 inch spoke wheels at the right width and to make it work with those forks, this rear end and everything. Ordered a hub for a V7 from Motor Guzzy. Came red, not this red. I had to strip it, send it to Dusty at DC overnight. He powder coated everything. I machined out here, machined out this side to take a bigger bearing, which it needs for the V9, bigger than the V7. And what I did just to make sure, I'm doubling up my bearings here, give it a bit more load bearing on that side. So that's going to work. But I got another problem with that. 
which I'll address in a minute. The Piaggi bolts. I've unpacked some of it already. Individually wrapped fresh nipples and individually wrapped spokes. So I'm keeping it for the most part motor guzzy. Um, why do they individually wrap each nipple? Keep them fresh, maybe, for the final consumer? I don't know. I like it. It's a nice touch. I've got all that. Um, what I want to do, get rid of this black here, so I'm going to get rid of this on the rotors, polish the centers, because I have so much time on my hands. It's got parts from all over the fucking place. This is a I think late 90s, early 2000s, motor guzzy front wheel. This was a 19, uh, sorry, an 18, I want a 17, but I worked it out. I took this hub, this is the hub that I faced off. Then I robbed the spokes out of that, which should be the right length, because this is a drop center, to go onto this DID aluminum rim of the right width, 17 inch, that I got from Prince Albert, Canada, believe it or not. Just waiting on one rim now. Um, guys from W USA out in California. Josh, thanks a lot. Um, I bet you I see it in a little bit. According to my tracking, I'll have it soon. So we'll start putting the fucking wheels together. It'll roll soon. The one problem I have, even though the V7 hub, because the V7 comes with a spoke option, whereas the V9 doesn't, so kind of limited there. But they do have the same cush drive. Unfortunately, the V7 hub is an inch narrower than the V9 hub. So I thought, okay, I'll shift it over and space it over, but what that did with, when I tried the V7 wheel, it put the whole rim over here. Then I thought I'd make a little drive dog to drive from this cush drive to the hub. A lot of machining. If I have to, I'll do it. What I may be able to do, if I build the wheel, if I've got enough thread to make it safe on the spokes, I can move the whole rim over one side, get that into the cush drive, and just space all the braking across. Sounds fucking complicated, doesn't it? And then I got to deal with the front, but I got the brakes lined up for the front, I just got to get the wheel together. Wish me luck. Okay, well, it's been a long 24 hours, but I got some wheels. So, I like this, got the five, just managed to squeeze, squeeze a five inch in there and a three and a half in the front. Got these true to, I might put this back in the truing stand. A little wobble to it. This one's dead nuts, dead straight, so this is good. Nice aluminum XL ribs. I gotta say thanks to W, USA, Josh. You fucking saved me. He got me this XL rim, got it out real quick. The thing is, I thought they might be both kind of different. They're exactly the same style, which is great. I might get rid of this, nothing wrong with XL, but that's just too much red. So, thing is, because I've had to change the bearings to the bigger size, for the bigger axle, for the Marzocchi front end, obviously that's not gonna fit in there. I guess if you hit it with a fucking hammer hard enough, it'll go, no, it won't, don't be fucking silly. So what I did, I machined up this spacer, exactly the same to preload the bearings as it goes through. So. What I did, I machined out the center, did this. Look at that, like the proverbial cock in the sock. So, you've got those flanges on there. And helps if you line this bastard up. This is nice because I can face these off for the right width for the calipers. And I just dress it up, give it a little bit of a highlight. Like I said, dusty at DC, powder coating. Yeah, I had a lot of people help me out. Um, Joe got this rim, the only one I could find a 40 spoke XL rim, the right size and everything. I found it in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Lovely fellow by the name of Myron. Probably the best eBay dealing I've ever had. This guy was like, those Canadians are fucking, they're polite. I like them and they drink. They're like polite Australians that talk funny. So. Runs pretty true, I'm happy with that. What I did, got the black, I like getting rid of the black. So we've got these rotors here, I think that's gonna look good. So now, I just gotta change a little bit of the spacing on this. What I did, I built this rim off to the side, offset it with the spokes, 
from the center so I could move the drive dog part of the hub from the V7 hub closer to the differential and then center the thing here so I can space it on the other side. I was going to do it the other way around, but fuck, this works. Worked out even better. But before I go any further, I'm going to put a tire on. Okay, this is kind of a neat trick. I'm sure a bunch of you have done this before. It's not like some secret, but uh, especially with tube ties, easy way to get them on. Some zip ties, wrap around, stuff your tube in there, obviously, run up your valve stem with the red dot. That's also the lightest part of the tire, that's why you put it near the valve stem, helps balance it more naturally. Get some big cable ties, cinch that down like that. What I like to do, silicon spray, make it slippery as a fucking slippery thing. Put a bit of silicon on there. And like I said, this get the valve stem lined up. This doesn't always work. See? The good thing about doing it that way is you're not using tie levers and pinching the tube. And it's fucking on. The only problem is it's hard to inflate with the cable ties on there. You fucking cut these off now. Stick your valve stem through. And now it's on, cut the cable tie, like I said. It's in the right position. No danger of pinching the tube. I'm sure a lot of you have done this before. It's not exactly a... And put some fresh air in. Popped on the bed. There we go. I think that looks lovely. Mold a couple of these on. Gonna make some spaces up. That should be easy enough. We can put the front wheel on. Then I'll move on. I'm gonna true this one up a little bit, put a tire on that, shove it in the back. So, there's an old saying. You can't make strawberry jam out of shit. I guess you can if you've got enough sugar or enough patience or whatever the fuck it takes. This has tested my patience. And I'm a patient man. I've often been a patient, but that's a different thing. Anyway, as you probably know, little problem, bit of a letdown on the wheels. I accumulated a bunch of parts and the last 48 hours have been pretty brutal. So I got a roller now. Spoke wheels, 17s, managed to get a 17.5 in the back, which everyone told me I wouldn't. Didn't even have to remove, as people with guzzies know, remove the final drive to get it in. Just loosen up a little bit, slid right in. Got all this lined up, back wheel centered, Front wheel's looking good. The thing is, you know, chasing all these parts and doing all this, fucking ate into a lot of my time that I was using, was, was going to be using to finish my metal work, the tank. And so now I'm running out of time. So I got a pound on this. I don't know if I'm gonna have time because I want to make a bikini fairing and maybe even a little belly pan, but I'm not gonna have time for that. So I will make a front fender, get some other shit together but uh, it's gonna be some late nights, and not fun late nights. I don't know, maybe I'll drink while I'm staying here. It'll fucking drive me to drink, I tell you. But the thing that's really exasperating about all this time unnecessarily that I had to spend on these wheels, and they look okay, they're temporary, they look all right. Um, but now I've got all this shit, like because I chose to retain the ABS and the traction control, so, it's like hooking up all that stuff, um, getting the brakes bled up, you know, all my, you know, fittings, push rods, my linkage for the shifter, my linkage, it's not that big, but, you know, the same as the exhaust and the muffler and the bracket for that. And it's spare time that I don't have, so I'm up against it now. Seeing what some of the other guys are doing, Moto Studio and, well, haven't seen that much, but see that they're doing stuff. The cool thing about this build program is, uh, Seems like everyone's doing something different. Motor Studio, Revival, and Untitled Motorcycles. Um, it's good, we're all doing something a little di bit different genre. So, that's a good thing about a guzzy. You can do whatever the fuck you want with it. Haven't welded the, the, the bottom end of the tank in yet, thank goodness, because when I put it on, I looked at this soft line I have for this indent, and it looks like shit. It almost made me throw up in my mouth. It's horrible. 
I got these nice crisp lines here and here. So I'm like, I better change it and it doesn't flow. It's a soft line. So I made this template up. What I'm gonna do by hand hammer and dolly, put a nice crisp line, take this down, dish it in a little more with that. So I'm just gonna start hitting the side. I'm not gonna do it like that. I'm gonna do it. This is the tedious part. Now I've got this line here. So what I'm gonna do is slowly start bringing this down. What I'll do, you know, I'm gonna have some hammer marks, which I'll have to, the thing that sucks too, is when you're doing, as most metal guys you know, try and do a concave and get them finished, because it's hard to file a concave like this, especially outside. And of course I made it hard for myself. I made this out of three pieces. The top, hammer the crease. This is a weld line I finished, but doing a convex and a concave out of one piece. Normally I'd make two pieces. This, I don't know why the fuck I did it this way. It's a challenge. It's good to challenge yourself. You just slowly do it. I suppose you could probably do this with a bead roller or something, but where would the fun be in that? I don't like to use as much mechanical stuff. I like to I like the tactile, to feel it. I'm a touchy-feely guy. There's a shop bag now and I'll just get a sand a little bit. Found some of the imperfections. This is my favorite hammer. Doesn't mean I use it for everything, but it's just my favorite one. I'll do next, I've almost got it right. And the line flows more with the shape of the tank and it looks right where the bike sits on the ground. But I'm gonna file this and I'll, end up, I'll get in there with a nice pick hammer put a nice crisp edge on there. So you can see it's starting to, start to look better, I think. Okay, I don't know if you can quite tell, but now it's got a bit sharper. Like I said, I'm gonna sharpen this line up a little bit more, but it flows better now and it's not that soft line, which I think the soft line didn't tie in with the crisp lines. It, it looked like shit. Like I said, I'm gonna sharpen up this line a little bit here. <coughs> I was gonna maybe do a brushed finish in here, and down on the flat spots here, have everything else polished, maybe some red pinstripes. I think it'll look tits. This is the tedious part. I've sanded this, filed this, hammered this, hit it with a pick, um, and it's just, and, and then polished it. And it's like, I keep looking before, I haven't welded the bottom in yet. So before I weld the bottom in, I wanna make sure I get everything perfectly straight. When I finish this, this one I'm just doing with 320, and then I'll polish it, and then I know I've got everything straight, then I can weld the bottom in, because once I weld the bottom in, obviously I can't get to anything to pick it. This is stuff that'll fucking drive you crazy, but I guess I'm kind of anal. Because once I know this polish, it'll still have some light scratches in it, so after that, then I'm gonna wet sand it, 600, then go to 800, maybe 1,000 and polish it. This will be shiny as a fucking shiny thing. Start looking down here, you can see. So I've got this really close now. Some of it might look like dense in the video, but it's, it's just discoloration for the most part. Fucking man with a white stick would be fucking happy to see it, I tell you. It's my birthday today. Who gives a fuck? I don't really give a fuck when you get this old. I lie about my age. I tell people I'm 75. And I say, wow, you look really good for 75. See how that works? Um, anyway, fuck it. I'm going to work today and then get up early tomorrow morning. going to go down to Barber. Seems like everyone else is, so, you know, I don't want to be left out. So I'm going to go down there. So if any of you don't, buy me a beer. Um, or I'll buy you a beer. Whatever. Let's just drink some beer and have a fucking good time. I, I'm looking forward to it. I've never been. So I don't get out much. So fuck it, I'm locking up the shop tonight, going down to Barbara in the morning. It should be a great time. I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of new friends and seeing some old friends too. So come and say hello if you're there. Getting close with this, but what we want to do, see V9 Roma. Now, some nice aluminium badges. It's a V9 Sport. Okay, a few people were asking about polishing. This is a one horsepower stitch mop pedestal buff. You can get cheaper, smaller ones if you're not doing a lot. I actually need something bigger and more powerful than this. It's a piece of shit, but it works at the moment. Then these things are called stitch mops. Um, this is a sizal stitch mop. This one's like a, a rough hessian thing, and you use, I'm almost out of it. These are bars of polish. This is Tripoli, this is a green for stainless, it's more Tripoli. This gray one, which is almost gone, that's emery. So you would use that with the sizal mop. 
that'll get your scratches out and imperfections, particularly with stainless steel, it's hard. But normally I sand my aluminium. I said right that time. And like I said, this is the first one. I've got it down to where I've sanded with 320. So 320, and then what I like to use initially, which is right, which is a, a completely sewn stitch mop like this, is you just push the bar in when it's running, like this. You're impregnating the stitch mop with the compound. I use a stainless for a first polish because it's a little more aggressive and it'll get the scratches out. Then I'll go back over it with Tripoli. Realistically, you should change your stitch mops for different compounds, but it works out okay the way I'm doing it. So, I'll put it, the other thing about polishing, it's fucking dirty as fuck. So, um, I've got a shirt that I put on, get a good face shield, one that comes around, a pair of welding gloves, because fucking aluminium gets fucking hot as hell, and then, I have an old stocking cap, cover your ears, the shit will get in your ears, it'll be fucking in everywhere. Get a nice respirator that fits under the mask, it'll keep a lot of the black off you. Um, because all that black aluminum dust, and then this is basically wax, it gets hot and it'll stick to you, it'll be everywhere. But if you don't care, fucking get dirty. Look at this shit. That's just from sanding. So, why not? So here we are, we're at the point where I've got the outside of the tank polished. Um, you know, the quick polish, so I can find the imperfections, and which I've got most of them out. Well, pretty much got all of them out. Any that are left, fuck it, they're staying there. No, it's nice, it's good, trust me. Um, so anyway, now I can weld the bottom of the tank in. That means put the fuel pump in, put some petrol, gas, whatever, as I said before, and then we can fill it up with petrol, and then we can run it, which means I can ride it. I get all the oil in the motor, uh, oil and transmission, everything else, so we're so close now, we'll be riding it in no time. I'm gonna weld the bottom in today, so let's get on with it. As you can see, I've started some welds, front and rear, make sure I've got the top, you know, I've had this on the bike, squared it up for the tunnel where it mounts, got these nice pieces, this piece I made up, that's where the fuel pump goes, and so we got it ready. It's, I don't know how I did shit without this fucking table. Um, I get these squares, and this works out good. I set them up here, just got a bolt on the side, a couple of toggle clamps, so then it's a great way to set the fucking tank. And then, like I said, I've got some welds in there, weld in the front, so I've got it all square. Now what I'm gonna do is just slowly, with my favorite hammer, is just... This is the part now, you know, I've gotta go slow because if I've got too much heat in there, I'm gonna get some warpage. Obviously there's gonna be a little bit, but I've got enough metal there where I can file it out. Got one tack in here, so I'm going to start welding in here. Obviously, because I've got this underneath, I'm not going to have to run the ground straight to the tank. Jesus Christ, how do you get that caught on your scrotum? So, I'm going to start. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, my fucking welding hat. Okay, contact. The other thing that's important when you're welding aluminium is keep it clean. You know, always keep these, you know, don't contaminate your stainless steel brush by you know, cleaning other shit with it. Just keep brushes just for aluminium. And we all know cleanliness is next to godliness. That's probably why I'm some sort of heathen. So, a brown little bead here, this is enough. I don't want to put too much heat right there, so I'll move along, do a bit more here, a bit more here. Just keep hammering, bending, so it's a nice uniform edge rolled over into the bottom. Do a little bit over the other side. This should take me yeah, probably an hour or so. So I'll finish then up, get them polished. So. I like, you know, I'm almost done. Um, maybe I've already fired it up. Maybe I haven't. 
fucking wait and see. What I like, well, it's kind of annoying, you know, you get down to the end, you've got to get everything finished, and it's like they say, the devil's in the details, and uh, I keep finding little things to make. I put the ignition switch down here, and I thought it's, I'm going for the retro thing, so down here, and then I want to make this plate, this follows a line of the tank here, put some little mesh, did the same on the other side. This hides a lot of the wires and cables and shit like that, so put some mesh in there. I think it looks fucking tits. Got the seat, I got a little tweak to do at the front on the seat. That's pretty much done. Um, I want to make a nice little aluminum cover for there. And like I said, it's the details. I've got to finish up a front fender too. Um, I don't want to do a boring old fender. The other thing that's tough with inverted forks to do a retro fender, these are my only real brackets here, so I'm gonna fuck with that somehow. This is my ABS line. I'll take care of that. Don't worry about that. So the other thing I wanted to do, because I you know, obviously took the original exhaust off, which covered down here, it was a big bracket, safety switch. I wanted to retain all that, so I cut the stand bracket, moved it up so it's not so conspicuous. Then I decided to, I cut the whole stand down, machined up this stainless shaft, obviously it's too long, I'm going to cut this down, put a little foot on there, to be a nice, clean looking side stand. So i got to get it done, because we're picking it up, I'm sure everyone realised we're going to debut these things or unveil them at the IMS in Long Beach in California November 17th. I'm pretty sure, but I'm sure you'll find out about that online. So anyway, I better get back to it. Finish this fucker up. I'm sealing the tank at the moment. Uh, I got all the welds been pressure tested. It's good, but I like to seal it. You never know later on with aluminum tank, aluminium tank. You know, you could get a bit of fatigue and it could crack. So I like to seal everything. So at the moment, I've sealed that, tipped everything off, it's got to dry, give it a final polish. Bob's your uncle. Looking fucking good. Draining the excess sealer off the tank and what? It's a later model six cylinder gold wing. 1500. Like I would make a cafe racer out of something like this. This is probably gonna annoy some people. It's gonna be fucking awesome as fuck. So it pulls like a fucking 12 year old boy. Where do you see when I want to shove in this bastard? This is gonna be fucking great. This thing will fucking stop like a real stoppy thing. Back purging. I like to back purge. They go like shit off a shiny shovel. Radiator fucking grill fucking thing. Guess what else I got? This might be a little painful up your Kyber Pass. So, a tight flange is a happy flange. The purists probably want to lynch me at this point. Built the fuck out of this motor. I think it's gonna look tits. Vacillated. Vacillated. That sounds like something you do with Vaseline. So, fuck yeah! Put a fucking turbo on it! Fucking thing rips. Fuck this thing flies. Tight as a fish's ass, and that's watertight. It's got like fuck all plastic on it. An unwanted advance. Fucking Bob's your uncle. Just like a board one. So, so and thank you for being a good sport about it. It's fun. It's meant to be fun.